Now, in Iraq, after the establishment of the Abbasid Empire, by the way, they're called the Abbasid Empire because they were children or descendants of a man by the name of Abbas. So the Abbasid Empire was a Shiite Muslim empire with its capital in Baghdad. And at that time, the Jewish community began to flourish because it was the wealthy empire. It was the center of the great commercial activity of the West. And the Jews had been a significant community in Babylonia, and their influence grew even greater. Now, I want to say something about the Jews in Babylonia. Look, the Jewish community in Babylonia was established sometime around 600 BC. We know that the Babylonian emperor Nebuchadnezzar conquered Judea in 597 BC. And when he did, he took several thousand of the nobility out of Judea and took them to Babylon as hostages, including the king of the Jews, a man by the name of Yehoiachin, a young fellow, 18 years old at the time. Yehoiachin had been on the throne for three months. I mean, his father was assassinated. He became king. Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem, removed him from the throne, took him to Babylon as a hostage, appointed his uncle as king. Then 11 years later, Nebuchadnezzar came back again. This time he destroyed Jerusalem, conquered the land of Israel. The last king of Judea was Tzitkiahu, known as Zedekiah in English. And at that time, he took another part of the population of Jerusalem back to Babylon. And that is what they called the Babylonian exile. Now, 47 years later, in 539 BC, Cyrus the Great, the Persian, conquered the Babylonian Empire. And when he conquered the Babylonian Empire, and he declared that Jerusalem should be rebuilt and the temple should be rebuilt in Jerusalem and that the Jews should rebuild the land of Israel. When you read that declaration, it has some fascinating clauses in it. He says, I want the temple to rebuild in Jerusalem. God wants me to do that. But then he says, but those Jews who want to stay where they are in Babylonia, wherever they live, they're free to remain wherever they choose. Now, what does that mean? It means that 47 years after the destruction of Jerusalem, the Jews of living in Babylonia are perfectly content to stay there. Sure, there were others who wanted to rebuild Jerusalem. Obviously, the priests did. Without a temple in Jerusalem, they don't have a job. Even the grandson of the king wanted to go back, and I suppose thought in terms of establishing himself as king in Jerusalem, which the emperor said you shouldn't do. So the Jewish community is established in Babylonia. And Babylonia is the great commercial center of Western Asia. There was a Babylonian empire. Now they're gone. Now it's the Persian empire. 200 years later comes Alexander the Great. So now the Persians are out of power and the Greeks are in control. The Greeks are in control. And then after the decline of the empire of Antiochus, the Persians come in. Well, there is a Parthian Empire, which is Persian, and a Sasanian Empire, which is also Persian, one after another. And then comes the Arab conquest, and now the Arabs, Muslims, are in control of Babylonia. But which group has been there all the time? The Jews. The Jews were there from 600 BC or 597 up to the time of Muhammad's conquest, or the Muslim conquest, which is 650. So the Jews have been there for over 1,200 years. Empires have come and gone, come and gone, and the Jews were still there. So they were the stable nation in the Babylonian region. And their stability is reflected also in what they created. I mean, when you read the Babylonian Talmud, you study it, you can see the, the extent to which the Jewish people had established a legal system. 